Hmm. You need an artifacts. Ooh, 4X card game. Oh, this sounds pretty good. Let's have a look see. Okay, well, let's see how you play this game anyway, shall we? Uh-oh. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of The Broken Meeple, and this is probably going to be the last review that I get out before Christmas. I know I might have said that once already before, but I feel fairly certain. At some point, I do have to take a break. So, you know, if this is the last one I do, then Merry Christmas, and I'll see you just before the new year, because I'll have more reviews to do, and of course, the top what? sorry, I was about to say top 100, the top 10 of 2017 before this year is done and shortly after I'm going to do the top 10 expansions of 2017 as well because I think this year did better for expansions and reprints than it did for actual main games but I digress. Objection! Today I am looking at Alien Artifacts. Now this is nothing that new. It's been around for a little while but mainly over in the States and that. It's uh, been a bit more tricky to get hold of it uh, you know, around our neck of the woods. And this is what is being portrayed as a 4X card game. So for those of you not sort of uh, familiar with the whole 4X terminology, basically it stands for Explore, Exploit, Expand and Exterminate. That is basically what they say about a lot of civilization based games. Think um, Sid Meier's Civilization, you know, like I talked about with the New Dawn review. You know, when you play that game, you, the PC game that is, you are exploring lands, you don't know what's out there, you're exploiting the land, getting resources, you're expanding your territory, you know, moving out and conquering other areas, and of course you're exterminating by taking over other people's capitals. So that's generally what they mean. Well, it's difficult to replicate 4Xs in anything other than a grandiose civilization game. This game tried to sort of break that trend by going, we can do a 4X card game that's playable in about an hour, 90 minutes tops. Whoa, that's a bold claim, especially from Portal. So it's like, ooh, I gotta check out this one because I have to investigate stuff like this. This is what I like. You know, when designers and publishers make these bold claims about their games, I always have to find out whether it's, tr you know, true or false, in my opinion anyway, like I say, or subjective. So, what do you do in Alien Artifacts? Well, basically, you are, you take control of a faction and you are setting out across space to, you know, engage with, in a violent manner, with these different, with alien systems, but also potentially with each other. And what you do is that you are drawing cards from these decks. There are different colours of them. So you have red for ships, which are used to give you sort of special abilities or go out and fight. Uh, you have blue cards, which are technologies. These allow you to get special abilities throughout the rest of the game or act as like mid and end game scoring opportunities. You then have the green cards, which are the planets. These can either give you discounts on being able to do other actions or they can give you resources like tucked underneath the card to use in later turns. And the whole like monetary system works on two aspects. Firstly, credits, typical money track. You use these in order to get more cards from the middle decks into your tableau into what's called a working construction section. You then use resource cards, which are basically these simplistic, uh, you know, typical size cards with symbols on them that denote the red, blue and green and yellow for wild, you know, types of resources that there are. You will play a certain amount of these to start with, limit two, but you can increase this over time. And you play a maximum of those two cards total up the resources, and these allow you to build the various things you had under construction as well as perform other actions. So you can build your ship, you can develop your technology, you can settle on a planet. I think they call it, um, is it settle on a planet? I don't know, but basically settle a planet. 
And the great thing with these cards is that you have two sides to them, logistics and operational. So you have a choice when you build it as to whether you want it on which side. The logistics will generally either give you a discount on things or special abilities or, you know, some like increasing your what they call assembly limit, which is how many cards or those resources you can play. If you have them on the operational side, you can uh, get resources tucked underneath planets. The technologies can score for you at the end of the game and sometimes during. And the ships allow you to go off and fight either alien systems, which are basically a generic foe, or potentially, you know, wail on other players in order to nullify some of their cards. And basically, you do one action each turn of several, by like, multitude of things. I mean, you will buy a card, develop, build, settle, you've got free special actions you can do for a certain amount of resources, you've got a skill that's on your card, there's all sorts of, and even the technology might give you more actions. There's a lot of choices you can do, providing you've got the money and the resources to do it, that is, but you just do one action. You do an action, and the next player, next player, and you keep going until you run out that resource deck a certain number of times before you then tally up the victory points and see who wins. Pretty simplistic in terms of how it operates. If only the rule book would actually convey that in the same way. Now, compared to some rule books I have read from Portal, this is one of the better ones. But it's still not great. You will be able to play the game, sort of, from the rule book. I mean, you'll be able to at least get started and get going. But I guarantee you, you're going to be looking at an FAQ at some point. Particularly as there's one or two things in here that the rule book doesn't even mention. You know, your faction card with the skill on the back and the end game scoring. Your faction card is not in this rule book. Does not explain it. Now, for the most part, they're pretty self-explanatory. But again, why is it not in the rule book? Don't just assume. And even then, you'll get a lot of the technologies where you'll be like, how does that work? You know, so that's a separate attack. Does that mean I, does that combo with that? And there's a lot of times when you'll get to ambiguous rules and the book doesn't explain them. God knows where the FAQ for this is. It's probably on Board Game Geek somewhere. But, you know, you're going to be looking up an FAQ for a lot of these different cards that work together. And even then, the rulebook is not laid out in the best way. You know, I have seen worse. I mean, you want worse. Check out, you know, the first edition of Robertson Crusoe's rulebook. Uh, check out the first Martian rulebook. You know, there is worse. And I'm sorry, but, you know, Portal gets a bit of a bad press for their rulebooks. It's not going unnoticed, guys. You need to sort this out. These rule books are not the best way to learn your games. And the more complex your games are, the more we're going to need those solid rule books. But, yeah, not the best way to sort of get into this. I highly recommend you instead see the logo and use Rodney Smith. Rodney Smith has done a Watch It Played video for this game, and that is pretty much how I was able to learn how to play it myself. I had the rule book there as a supplement, but I pretty much relied on Rodney Smith to teach me the basics of, oh, that's how you set up, that's how this works, that's what this means. Perfect. You know, I use Rodney Smith for a lot of rule videos, and in this case, I highly recommend you do so with this as well. And you can check it out before you even buy the game to see if it's the kind of thing you like. Now, Forex's theme-wise. Um... Typically, these sort of games have a pretty strong theme. You know, you feel like you're exploring. You feel like you're expanding the extermination. Uh, you might want to lower your expectations down with this. Now, I mean, there are some positives to this game. It sounds like I'm going on a massive, like, negative rant. Now, there is good stuff coming, but let's get the bad stuff out of the way. Firstly, that rule book, as I mentioned. Secondly, the theme is just non-existent here. This is a straight-up mechanical card game. You know, you, you may be doing different things and they call it explore, expand, exterminate or whatever, but you barely feel you're, you're actually doing any attacking. You barely feel you're settling on a planet and you barely, I mean, probably the most thematic thing in here is probably the fact you develop a technology and it gets you points or a special ability. Aside from that, you are basically just playing resource cards, buying cards, building cards, and you're basically just doing tons of stuff with cards. It gives me that kind of same feeling as a drier form of Imperial Settlers and 51st State. Hmm, conveniently, by the same company, actually, I believe. Um, yeah, what a surprise. Well, I, I must say I prefer Imperial Settlers, but, you know, this gives me that kind of feel where you've got a bunch of cards and you're doing cool shenanigans with them. And 
the fact is, you are doing some cool stuff. You know, you, these actions are super quick. You know, turns go around pretty fast. Maybe for your first game, you might hesitate a bit. But it's not difficult to crack this out for two players in an, about an hour. Maybe slightly longer because you're checking rules. But about an hour is all you should need for a two-player game. A little bit longer for three-player. If you try this with four or five players, you will want to gouge out your eyes with an ice pick. Because do not do that. Seriously, do not do that. <laughs> Oi. This game does not scale well. Does not scale well. It is... I've heard there's actually a cool fan variant for like a solo play. Um, I'm not taking that into account with this review though. Because I want to review the game as it comes in the box. But I will check that out. And it sounds like it might actually elevate this up a bit for me. But this is really a two or three player game. Three player is okay. But this sings as two player. You know, back and forth, back and forth. Turns are super quick. You get the game done in about an hour, just over. And you have a good time with it. And the attacking is back and forth. It's not like two people have a little war and one person is there at the side, you know, you know, not getting hurt at all. It's not like the combat is that punishing. You just have to pay a few resources to muck up the cards. They're spending actions to attack you. You're spending actions to get rid of it. So it all kind of balances out. It's not super punishing. And of course, you'll get, you know, alien artifact rewards for going after the actual aliens. So there's more incentive to do that than there is to attack other players. It's just there as a bit of an option. So, yeah, theme-wise, not there at all. It's shenanigans with cards, but interesting shenanigans with cards. And certainly can overstay its welcome with four or five players. It just takes too long. The actions may be quick, but you each round is running out that resource deck. And even with two players, it, you're talking like half an hour to run out one, the deck once, pretty much. So if you imagine for two players, it takes about that length of time. You know, you're finishing the game in about an hour. Think what happens when you've got the same size deck, but with three players. You you feel like you're doing less, and you've got to run that deck out three times. Four players, four times. Five players, five times. You really don't want to do this with four or five. Believe me, stay away. But two players, brilliant. Best way to play it. And the solo variant does sound like it's a, you know, sounds like it might work. I will try it out. But I'm not basing this game on a fan-made solo variant because that doesn't count, okay? If it's, if it's being officially published, then fine. But with this, it's what's in this box that I'm concerned with. The components themselves are... Fairly decent, actually. I mean, the cards have all got that kind of linen finish to them. So, to be fair, I'm not even bothering to sleeve this game. You know, it it feels like the cards are sturdy enough to take the punishment. And you're not, like, you're not drafting them. You're not uh, doing a ton of shuffling, at least before, uh, apart from setup. But you're pretty much just holding them in your hand and playing them. There's not a huge amount of rustling with the cards. So, you, without sleeves, you should actually be relatively fine. I haven't noticed any you know, massive wear and tear with the cards as I've been using it for these review games. And artwork-wise, I like the art, but it feels a little bit sort of sparse. You know, on some of the cards, you know, on the back with the logistics, it's mainly a white background with a picture. That's not too bad. On the operational side, it's a bit more detailed and you've got the spacey stuff in the background. But it's pretty, you know, it's fairly basic-ish artwork, but it's not bad. You know, the cover looks striking, but everything else kind of looks a bit like that. It looks like, looks like you're making a 3D space simulator video game, and it's in pre-production. Like, you know, you've got the art templates, but you haven't quite worked out the rest of the backgrounds and that at times. It's a little bit on-off, but even then, it doesn't really help portray the theme... But even then, it doesn't really bring out the theme as much. And a lot of the designs are too similar. The green planets are basically just a planet that's a different color. The blue technologies are a little bit more varied and they're a bit more interesting. Like They look a bit like blueprints, so that's quite cool. But the ships seem to share the exact same kind of template. There's subtle differences, but there's really not a huge amount of variation in this. It's not like, okay, one of them's a trawler, so it's a big rectangular blocky thing, and the other one's like a, you know, a big interceptor plane style, you know, with big laser cannons or anything. They don't really seem to look that much different. 
But it's not to say the artwork is bad at all. It looks nice, but I don't think it quite helps to bring out what theme there is in this game. It's just, it's there, it's fine, you're not really paying that much attention to it anyway. So there's been a few bad comments to say, but on the good side, as I mentioned, the whole, you know, all the, the actions are super quick, and you can, after you've finally got the rules in your head, get this turned out with two to three players in a reasonably quick time. Does it feel like a 4X game? Not really. I mean, technically they've achieved this whole 4X in a card game, but you're not going to feel like you're doing those 4Xs. The whole thing is basically building up a tableau of cards. Granted, they've represented the four different styles, you know, like extermination is for the ships mainly, and, you know, the technologies is more about the expand and stuff like that. It's, but other than that, it's not quite a 4X experience if that's what you're considering. I mean, explore. What are you exploring? You know, you basically might settle on a planet. It's just another green card. It really doesn't feel like a 4X experience. So that whole claim that they've made is a little bit like, yeah, sweep that under the carpet and we'll concentrate on the mechanics, which are more interesting. You know, there's a lot of cards in these decks. Unfortunately, it's, the abilities are kind of similar and they are, there are rinse repeat, uh, rinse repeat versions for particularly the blues and the greens. Uh, sorry, the reds and the greens. Sorry, my apologies. And the blue cards are actually pretty varied. I don't know if there's any duplicates in them, or if there is, there weren't that many. I couldn't find that many. And they have a lot... I think the scoring is repeated, but the actual abilities, they're quite varied. And they can combo with planets and ships and everything to lead to some very unique ways of playing the game. The first game I played, a two-player of this, I was developing quite a lot of technologies. And the idea was, was that I was utilizing them in a combo to make... You know, buying revenue, which is a special action, really cheap for myself, which meant I could score a lot of the uh, end game points. Whereas my opponent was utilizing a strategy where he'd settled on so many planets that relied on making ships cheap, that he was just building ship after ship after ship, sending it out on attacks against the alien system. Did he care if it got damaged or destroyed? No, because it cost him next to nothing to trade for another ship and then just buy it back again. Even when they got progressively more expensive, it didn't matter because he had such a big discount. I think I won that game in the end, but, whew, you know, it was a two very different strategies and not, you know, a massive spread in score either. So, replayability-wise, there's a lot of it here, mainly with those blue cards, though. I mean, yeah, you may say that you use certain discounts more than others, or you might, you know, increase your assembly limit more than others with certain things, but really, the blue cards are what make this game. Attacking each other doesn't really feel like much of an attack. You know, you, you basically draw a card from the resource deck, check the number, see where it matches on what they call a defense plan, one, two, three, or four, and read out the effect. Get victory points, get money, lose money, damage ship, destroyed ship, whatever. And you're hoping that against the aliens to get high enough to get alien artifacts, which are basically one use very powerful cards. Against an opponent, you basically just put a blockade token on their card, which nullifies it, which is a pain, but then you've only got to pay one credit to utilize it in a round, or you could just spend resources to get rid of it. So it's not a, you know, a massively damaging thing. And of course, the attacker is taking time out of his busy schedule to attack you in the first place. But you might feel that you're getting picked on a little bit, because the basic defense plan that you get, uh, if you have none in your hand, is pretty generic, and there's very little reason why someone wouldn't attack you when it's out. If you're able to draw a defense plan during the game, these allow you to, you know, lay on much more negative effects on the attacker. And so people are less inclined to attack you if they know you're holding one of these defense plans. So they'll go after the weaker character. A little bit of a mismatch, but personally, I prefer to just go after the alien systems anyway. Even if I'm doing a full attack strategy, I feel I'm getting more benefit from simply just gunning the aliens down than I am going after other players anyway. So it certainly doesn't feel like a take that experience in my book. You've got different factions to play, but they're not very asymmetrical. I mean, the starting setup is slightly different. You know, do you have a couple of these cards or a couple of those cards? But other than that, they're pretty generic. You don't have, you know, your special skill is basically a, a different way of getting alien artifact cards. You've got a slightly different endgame scoring. You won't actually 
feel like the race you're playing. I mean, you might have a race of just basic humans, you might have a race of these uh, weird looking alien creatures. Pretty much comes down to what your starting setup card and your endgame scoring card is, really. So no faction feels that different, and the asymmetrical nature is not quite there. So alien artifacts is a bit of a mixed bag for me, really. At its heart, it's a decent, you know, ch card shenanigan tableau building game. It, there is a decent amount of variety with some of the special abilities, and there are lots of different strategies you can employ to win the game. These are all good aspects, but the whole theme being super dry, the fact that the rulebook is a little bit of a slog to get through, you know, unless you, you know, utilize Rodney Smith's expertise on this one, and even then you're going to be asking a few uh, FAQ questions from time to time, and also the fact that it doesn't feel like the 4X game that they were trying to do. And it's slightly disappointing to me in that respect. If you're going to make a claim like that, I expected a bit more to come out of something like this. As such, and on top of that also the player scaling issue, where I will refuse to play this with four or five players. You know, three, maybe, but for me, this just sounds like a two-player game. Only a two-player game. A bit like how Race for the Galaxy works much better with just two players. And for those of you thinking, is it a bit like Race for the Galaxy? Not really. There's a lot more complexity in Race for the Galaxy than this one. But, you know, two-player head-to-head card game set in space, you know, if that's all the similarities you need, then go with it. So, I'm kind of torn on this one, really. I... I don't think it's going to be one I'm hanging on to. I probably... My personal rating's only about a... Probably a six. Six is about as much as I can give it, really. I do enjoy my time with this. Two players, really. Three, maybe. But I know that this could have done more. I know that maybe some of the cards could have just been a, had a bit more variety to them. And, you know, maybe the theme could have been a bit stronger. So it's probably not one that's going to stick around with me for a long time. But if theme is nothing not important to you, and you just want a you know, a fairly clever card game that you can knock out in, like I said, a short space of time. Only takes about an hour with two players. That's very short. And setup is very quick. Lay out the decks, shuffle them, shuffle them together or whatever, shuffle the individual ones, lay them out, choose a faction, lay your tokens out, done, go. You know, card, 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 card. So it's quick to play, quick to set up, and very quick to take down. That's always a bonus. You don't need much table space, you just need a good space to the left and right of you and maybe a little bit below your faction board. Other than that, the decks in the middle take up very little space. So there is some good aspects to have, but yeah, you know, I'm kind of clutching, you know, scraping the barrel trying to find a lot of them. So six is about as best as I can give it, but if it's up your street, recommend you give it a try. You know, try before you buy if you can and see what you think, really. So that's all from me. Six is the best I can do for this one. Alien Artifacts by Portal. If this is the last one before Christmas, like I said, have a great Christmas, and I'll see you at the end of 2017. Take care, guys.